we are here to discuss a new lecture of electromagnetic theory related to electric potential. In the earlier lecture, I have defined <coughs> electric potential and you know the basic meaning of electric potential. And in the last lecture, and I regret that uh, this lecture is delayed, quite delayed. We discussed the concept of distributed charges or localized charge distribution and we have three quantities V linear for linear charge density. I am defining these again in the next page. Surface charge density and volume charge density. These charge densities are very important when you are going to discuss the potential due to distributed charges. I will discuss this thing in more detail. So whenever we have, whenever we have charges distributed, charges distributed, this is a recapitulation of the previous lecture in short, distributed on a body to calculate the field, to calculate the field and potential field or you can say from potential, we use the charge density elements. Why we use these charge density elements? Let us see this. Charge density elements. And what are the charge density elements? They depend on the geometry of the object. We have lambda, which is called linear charge density. Linear charge density. And lambda is total charge Q by length of the object. Then you have rho, volume charge density. These are the conventional signs that are used in most of the textbooks. So I am using these signs. Charge density and rho is charge per unit volume. And then you have sigma, the surface charge density. Sigma is Q by A. Charge distributed in an area or charge per unit area. So these are the definitions. Now the question arises. If someone asks you why you use these elements for localized charge distribution, to understand this, to understand this concept or this answer of this question, why we use these quantities, to understand this concept or to answer this question, let us take an example. An example, this is a very relevant example and you will find it in many of the textbooks, including Griffith. We have to find, if we are asked to find the potential due to a uniformly charged spherical shell, remember this is, I have written this in red, spherical shell of radius R, means there is a spherical shell whose radius is R and charge is distributed. Where charge is distributed? charge is distributed on its surface because it is a shell. When you have a shell, it means it is uh, um, empty from inside and the charge is distributed in, uh, on the surface of the shell. So if you are asked to find the potential due to a uniformly charged charge spherical shell, how will you proceed? I will discuss this problem in detail to explain you some important concepts. Now we have a spherical shell, so it is empty from inside and whatever charge is residing, whatever charge is there on the <coughs> shell, it is on the surface of the shell, because it is a shell, empty from inside. Now what we are used to before this, we are used to find the potential due to a point charge where the problem is that there is a charge Q, suppose at point A and at point B 
or at point P, which is at a distance R from this charge, you are near, you are required to find the potential and you write the potential in this manner. How do you calculate the potential? It is integral minus infinity from, uh, from minus infinity E dot dr. The work done in bringing the charge from infinity to this point P. This is force times displacement and that is stored as the energy or the potential. Now what we have to do here is to, we have a distributed charge. Now to deal with this uh, situation, we should know what is a point charge. When we say a point, point means something like this. Suppose this is Q. What we call a point charge or uh, by the concept of a point charge, the idea is that the dimensions of the charge are negligible compared to the distance of the point where you are finding the charge. What I am trying to say, let me first lie, write this. A point charge, a point charge is such a charge, it is also a distribution, such a charge, where the dimensions, where the dimensions of the object or the charged body or the charged body are negligible are negligible with respect to the distance of the point of the point where we have to find or calculate the potential find the potential suppose now suppose i am uh, describing it with a diagram you have a sphere of radius r okay this is a sphere of radius r and you have a charge q on its surface suppose it is a shell and you are finding the potential at a point p which is at a distance Suppose this distance is R1 and R1 is much larger than R. Suppose it is 10 centimeter and it is 10 kilometer. For example, in this case, this spherical shell of radius R, maybe it has a radius 10 centimeter. It can be considered as a point charge. So here it is a point charge. The simple explanation in a crude manner is that if you are looking at this spherical shell from a distance of 10 km, it will appear as a point. It will not appear as a extended object of radius r. But now, suppose you are, cal you are calculating the potential due to this charged spherical shell at a point r2 which is not very different from R1 uh, or the radius of the shell, then in that case, then in that case, Q is not a point charge, it is a distributed charge. And for distributed charge, you have to, you have to use the charge density concept. For R1, which is much larger than R, the sphere, radius r is a point charge but, but for r2 it is distributed charge because if you look from point r2 to the sphere it will not appear as a point it will appear as a extended sphere now this is the diagram that i have taken from the book by griffiths in the present case, our point of interest is this point P. This is the point where we want to find the potential. And this is the center of the sphere O. Now this point, the, this point 
is uh, at a distance which is not very different from the radius of the sphere. So, in this case, this spherical shell is not a point charge, but it is a charge distribution. Now, what we have to do, how to deal with this situation, how to proceed with the calculation is that we have to change the distributed charge to a point charge. We have to change the distributed charge to a point charge. So, what we do, we choose a portion of a elemental area on the surface because the charge is distributed on the surface. This is the element, charge element, small area on surface, small area on the surface of the sphere. We choose this as a point charge and we will calculate the potential due to this small element and we will integrate this throughout the surface of the sphere because we are going to cover all the small elements that are on the sphere. So, what you are doing? You are doing a integration to cover the entire surface of the sphere. This is the methodology that we use to find the potential due to a charged, a distributed charge. Now the small surface on the sphere by from the 3D geometry, the geometry of the sphere, it is dA, we are calculating this dA, this is R square sin theta d theta d phi because in spherical coordinates we have three coordinates R theta and phi and this is the small elemental area. This is the position vector, position vector position vector of the small area or the elemental charge vector of element element charge element to the point where you have to find the potential where we calculate potential. And the point is P. So, this is the radius vector that is joining this point to R. And the distance of this point P from the center of the sphere, suppose it is O, it is Z. Now, here we make the use of the charge density. Charge density means the charge per unit area of this sphere. So, sigma is Q upon surface area Q upon 4 pi R, uh, 4 pi R square. Sorry, I have written epsilon naught. It should not be here. So, it is 4 pi r square. 4 pi r square is the surface area of the sphere. Now, the point charge is derived from this distributed charge. If this is the charge density, means charge per unit area, charge per unit area. Then, if you multiply this per unit area with this small element, a, a small charge element whose area is dA, then you are getting a point charge from a distributed charge. This is the concept that you have to use. Sigma dA is the point charge. It is equivalent to the point charge. Now, you will find the potential due to this charge, small point charge and integrate over entire sphere so that all the point charges are covered and you find the total potential. Now for a distribution of the potential, what you have to do, you have to integrate, this is V is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught sigma by R dA. I have defined this relation in the previous lecture and the first page of this same video lecture. So now we have to do some geometry. What geometry we have to do? We have to use the cosine law. Cosine law, you must have studied in vector. And we express this R in magnitude with, uh, uh, with respect to or in terms of the radius of the sphere and the distance. This distance is known. Z is known, R is known. Z and R are given. 
so you express the magnitude of this position vector with in terms of z and r and what you do you use the cosine law and now you have to integrate this now you have to integrate this now sigma and r square they are constant they will come out of the integration sign integral of d phi it will be 2 pi so it is 2 pi and theta ranges from 0 to pi so it is 0 to pi and you have to do this integration now this integration is not very difficult for you i expect so if you can do this uh, integration so this integration will come out to be something like this you have to do the integration by <coughs> substitution and it is 2 pi r square let me write it in a convenient form and it is uh, 1 upon rz 1 upon rz into root over let me correct it into root over r square plus z square minus 2 r z cos theta and the integration will run from 0 to pi you have to integrate it now you, after the integration what you find now you can put um, once you will put theta and once you will put uh, pi and you get a simple expression so this uh, there will be some cancellation it will be 2 pi r sigma it is sigma two pi r sigma upon z and this result is very important and it is root under r plus z square minus r minus z square r minus z whole square and this is also under root over this is the result that you will get now this result is not um, going to tell you the entire physics what you have to do you have to use the approximations now what are the approximations what are the method to extract physical information now since we have a root over we have to take the positive root now for, for there are two types of points or there are two situations the first is the when the point is inside point is point p where we are finding the potential is inside this means z is less than r and the next situation is point p is outside outside means it is z is greater than r now in the first situation we have to take the positive roots only positive roots only so in this situation z minus r so both will uh, give you positive results for z greater than r we cannot take this thing so what happens here in this case in the first in, in the case when z is greater than r you what approximation you will use for z greater than r this quantity you can write it as z minus r because when it you will break this z square plus r square minus 2 r z z is much larger than r so this quantity will be similar as z minus r because you have to take the positive things and for points inside means for this case what will you what will you consider if you are because you have to consider only the positive roots r minus z whole square is r minus z for the points inside the wire inside the sphere for this approximation now using these approximations what you obtain vz v as a function of z is r square sigma by epsilon z 
epsilon naught z epsilon naught is permittivity of free space this is outside and vz is r sigma by epsilon naught for points inside the sphere so these are the values of potential for point inside and outside now if you are calculating the potential in terms of the distance r which is from the uh, charge element to the point where you are finding the potential so in terms of r in terms of r what you have to do what change will occur because r what is r please see the diagram r is this distance from this elemental area da to the point of integration so this is a point charge so what you have to do in this case you have to write q the charge on this particular element so the charge on this particular element will be 4 pi epsilon not r square times sigma this is the charge on that particular small element so v in terms of r will be it is the it is a very simple uh, situation 1 by 4 pi epsilon not r 1 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q by r for points inside for points outside and for points inside it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q by capital r when you have this R inside the sphere, this is outside, this is inside. So what you see that these results are similar to the uh, potential due to a point charge. This is a very important result. This is how you can find the potential due to a distributed charge. If you once you have calculated the potential, you can find the electric field. This is the benefit of the potential formulation. I told you in the previous lecture that potential formulation, potential is a scalar quantity. You don't have to worry about the directions and all that. This is the benefit. From this potential using Gauss law, we will see some examples. We can calculate the electric field also. So in the next lecture, we will discuss the boundary conditions which are very important for your uh, electromagnetic problems. For the time being, stay tuned and again I regret for a delayed lecture and if you have some problem, you can tell me in the comment section. Thank you.